So at this point, we have done the logical model. We have also converted it into a relational model and made some fixes on the relational model as well. So the next step will actually be to convert it into a database script and then transition on to Apex to create the database and then build the application. Uh, but like I've said before, um, since we are going step by step, any mistake in an earlier step can cause problems in later steps. So at every point, we want to verify everything that we have done so that we don't run into problems later on. That's what I'm talking about in this particular video. So first of all, we want to verify. As I've already said, in the logical model, we want to make sure that every entity type has its own primary key. There's no key migration at all. Now this you ought, obviously ought to have done as soon as we finished the logical model. Nevertheless, I'm just reviewing it. A second, we want to make sure that there are no spaces or hyphens in entity type or attribute names. And then thirdly, we want to say that there are no fully solid lines on the model. In fact, wherever we have solid lines, there has to be a very good reason to have a solid line. Okay. Uh, and in fact, the only places I would see a solid line occurring for most of the time is lines which are leading out of associative entity types. Those lines have to be solid. Uh, for the other lines to be solid, you need a very, very good reason. Uh, and then, of course, since for every uh, many-to-many -many relationship, we'll be creating associative entity types. So after that process, in the diagram itself, you will see no many-to-many -many relationships at all. And then, of course, every attribute has to be assigned a type. So for example, we already said that for primary keys, we want them to be all integers, uh, for names and things like that, for product names, disc, you know, product category names, people's first names, last names, all of them will be character data types uh, and so on. Okay, You should not have any attribute in your model that doesn't have a data type. And of course, uh, for numeric attributes, you need to specify the size. And that consists of two parts. First is the precision, which is the overall length of how many digits will be there in that attribute. And scale, which tells you how many digits are there after the decimal point. And finally, uh, make sure that all the foreign key attributes are actually implicit. You shouldn't be manually creating any of the foreign key attributes. Whenever you have relationships, uh, Oracle Data Modeler will automatically create those attributes. So if you start creating them manually, you're going to create a lot of chaos and confusion. You shouldn't be doing that. So those are the things we want to do in our uh, logical model. We want to make sure they're all correct. And in the relational model, we did a few things. Uh, we renamed all of the foreign key columns, which this one, this step is not mandatory. It's optional. You could do that or you don't have to do it. I would prefer that you do it. A uh, second thing is uh, we make all the primary key attributes as auto increment. So we want to make sure we have done that. And finally, uh, all the foreign key names, I'm not talking about the attribute names, I'm talking about the actual foreign key names themselves. They should be 30 characters or less. Otherwise, you'll run into uh, trouble when you try to load your database description into Apex. Okay, so if for any reason you end up doing all of this and then while verifying you find that there's a problem and you want to fix something in your logical model, okay, then what you have to do is to delete your relational model, make a change to the logical model and regenerate the relational model. Okay, so to do that what you need to do as I'm showing in this particular slide is uh, go to relational one on the navigation on the left okay uh, then delete it you know right click and delete it as I have shown again in this uh, figure and then go back to the logical model make whatever changes you need to make and then go through the process of engineering forward engineering once again you can refer to the steps that I have shown earlier for this okay so once you complete all of this 
at this point you will have uh, a proper relational model and you will be ready to generate the database script and then proceed forward to loading it onto Apex and doing all of those things.